Hello everybody and welcome back. Building your own lathe from scratch could lead you to the typical chicken and egg problem. Namely, you need a part that has to be turned, that in turn will make the spindle to spin. So how do you solve this problem? Stick with me in this video. I've seen that many people that make uh, their own lathe uh, by themselves uh, often use a round bar uh, as a shaft uh, for their spindle, uh, maybe about uh, one inch in diameter like this, and uh, this is a little bit larger than one inch, and, uh, and insert it into uh, a couple of board bearings uh, with a case maybe, and then uh, they by a standard pulley uh, to drive the, the shaft and that's it. For my spindle and because of its design I ordered all the parts uh, from a local machine shop. Uh, all the parts uh, but the pulley because the intended motor for this spindle uh, went not to be usable. Long story. <laughs> uh, so I deferred the, the decision about the pulley but that time is arrived now. So, uh, but because of the diameter of this shaft, uh, I had some trouble in finding a suitable pulley of the shelf. And the only option would be to order the part from the local machine shop, uh, if only they didn't ask me five months for the delivery. So I got to be a little bit creative to make the part, to turn the part that in turn will make the spindle to spin. And, and this is my first idea. My first step uh, is you to use the belt directly on the shaft and, uh, and the belt is driven uh, by this, you know, this couple of motors coming from a washing machine. But this is just the first step because this belt uh, slips on this shaft, obviously. So let's see the first steps. I've started turning uh, chunk from a, a raw mild steel pipe, the same you've seen in the previous video when I made the turret for the tool post. The difficulty is uh, in making this job is not only the fact that uh, uh, I have to move the, 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 the carriage and the cross slide uh, by hand because I don't have yet the the lid screws but also the belt slips uh, on the shaft you can hear here the squeaky noise coming from the belt that slips uh, on the shaft but finally with patience uh, i managed to finish the part okay this is the very first part that i've made uh, with this lathe i didn't even uh, completely turn at the, this part because the uh, bed keeps slipping. The surface finish is not that bad. Uh, it could be better, but uh, well, uh, considering that I'm turning this uh, manually without the lead screws, uh, pushing with the hands, uh, the, the, uh, I think that is not that bad. Uh, internally it is not either completely turned uh, because uh, <laughs> I, I got this material and uh, and it is uh, already uh, just to the size uh, that uh, the final size that is required so uh, I had not enough material to 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 remove. But the important point is that it fits on the shaft. Let's check uh, how it does the, the wiper. It did a good job. You see, uh, this is the swarf that uh, is on the external side. And this is the, the wiper. Inside is pretty clean while uh, on the other side there is all this uh, fine dust of metal and uh, some swarf.
And this is the second step. This sleeve is installed on the shaft to help the belt not to slip, allowing me to cut out a ring of aluminum from an old flange. With a tool that I've made myself, I've cut these grooves that possibly match the poly V belt. This is a beautiful sound. <laughs> because I don't have yet enough torque, I exploit the kinetic energy stored in the rotating mass. Or said in simpler words, I use the inertia to overcome the lack of force. I've broken the tool, <laughs> so I had to finish it the last uh, millimeter with the, uh, the hack saw. So let me explain what is going on here, uh, because I've lost the footage. <laughs> First I've removed the sleeve that was put on the shaft at the beginning to help the belt not to slip, and the belt directly attached to the shaft again. Then the sleeve is clamped to the chuck and the aluminum ring put onto the sleeve using epoxy resin that I'm refining here. And you will notice that the ring is wobbling a little bit because I've mistakenly made the hole larger than the sleeve. Okay, let's set this uh, for a couple of days. It's uh, it's been like uh, five hours, and, um, and now the resin is uh, just tacky. Let's try to remove this uh, protective tape. All right. 43 hours later. Okay, let's check the result. Hmm. Not be easy to remove this. <laughs> and it's really hard. <laughs> let's attach it to the base. Okay, almost done. I will peel off. So this is the finished pulley. It could be better, but it has been turned without uh, the lead screws manually. <laughs> so, okay. 
this set screws will help to keep uh, the aluminum well in place. This set screws uh, are pointed so they, they will carve their own seat inside the, the aluminum. So here is the, the belt and I have to put something here to keep the keep this thing in tension maybe like this in this position so this is the bracket with a pin let's see how it fits it fits perfectly if only it was not flipped the other way around <laughs> I welded on the wrong side et voilà <laughs> Let's have a closer look. So this is the bracket with the, the tensioner. I initially welded in two points and then tested the, to adjust the, the tilt and, uh, and then finally welded. The. This is the tensioner that um, must be changed because I temporarily I put here a washer. And this is the pulley on the, on the shaft. Uh, of the, of the spindle. The torque is really high. Uh, I can't... Uh, uh, impossible to stop. Uh, <laughs> okay, by hands. <laughs> Because I made the mistake to carve the greaves for the poly V bed before installing the aluminum ring on the sleeve, being the ring slightly wobbling, the greaves are a tad of making the bed to jump between two of them. So I will have to turn the pulley's greaves again. Okay, next will be about the lid screws uh, and to make the lid screws for the lathe. And, uh, and then we'll di we will dive into electronics with uh, the electronic driver for the motors that will uh, drive the, the lead screws. Um, and uh, uh, because I've received a lot of questions about uh, the steel that I've used uh, uh, and, uh, and other things <laughs> about the lathe, I will post a Q&A video to give an answer to all these questions. And if you have other questions, uh, try to put them in the doobly-doo, I will do my best to try to give an answer to all of you. And if you liked this video, consider to share with your friends or maybe on Facebook, on Reddit and so on. For now, that's all folks, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye! Ko 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 